It's a chilly day today, even though the sun's out. It's a great time to be thinking about insulation, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So come on along. I'm going to show you where I'm insulating, what I'm insulating, how I'm insulating. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to tell you what I would have done differently because I don't believe I did it the best way I could. Come on along. We'll talk about it. Welcome to vanofaction.com, where we're taking a 2018 Dodge Promaster van and turning it into a family camper. This week we're doing the insulation, and insulation is probably the most debated topic of all van builds. So let us share with you what we're doing and why we're doing it, and maybe you'll pick up a nugget. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel. We're sharing everything we're doing. Come on along for the ride. So there's definitely an ongoing, never-ending debate about insulation in the van. What the best product is, what the best method is. It's just, it's just, it's just amazing how many different opinions there can be. We came at it from the direction first, asking ourselves why would we insulate? And there's two reasons. One is heat. One is sound. The heat. When it's cold out, you want to keep the heat in. You want insulation to do that. And when it's warm out, you want insulation to try and help you keep the heat out. That's number one. And sound is when we're driving down the road, we want to try and keep as much road noise as we can out. And we want to try and keep our sounds inside. The um, hard surfaces, there's going to be a lot of hard surfaces in the van. We're trying to do as much as we can to mitigate that. We've added some sound deadening with the Nokia wall product. I, I, I always say it differently. But the insulation itself should help quiet the road noise. So that's why we do it. Now the question becomes, how are we going to do it? And when I was thinking about insulating the van, one of the biggest concerns I have is moisture. And moisture is going to happen. It's going to happen in the form of condensation. Condensation occurs when a warm air mass and a cold air mass meet. And when that happens, you get condensation in the form of rain. You'll see it as frost on a window on a cold day in the winter. It's going to happen inside the van. There's no question about it. It happens everywhere. But in traditional construction, it's managed through insulation, which is what we're talking about. But in, con in con traditional construction, when you build the outside wall, you put the insulation in the middle of it, and then you stop the air from moving from the inside to the outside. And you do that with what's called a vapor barrier. Every, every home is going to have one. And you decide where that's going to be. So what we'll do is traditionally put the vapor barrier on the inside of that structure. So the vapor barrier is here. That prevents the warm air on the inside from moving through to the and meeting the cold air on the outside. Now the cold air on the outside, as it's allowed to move into the building, because the building will breathe, as it moves inside, it gets into the insulation, it starts to warm because the ambient temperature of the inside will migrate through, the temperature will migrate through, and the insulation will be a little bit warmer. So when the warm, when the cold air from the outside meets the air from the inside, they should both be at about the same relative temperature. There won't be any condensation. That's the way it works in a building. But in a van, the outside layer is the vapor barrier. I mean, obviously that's not gonna leak. That's where the air won't move past. So on the inside, we have exactly the opposite problem. We're almost turning our, our system inside out. We're going to have our air from the inside passing through the wall, and it's going to meet the cold air on the outside. There is There will be circumstances when there will absolutely be condensation, unless I can always keep the inside and the outside to be exactly the same temperature. And that's exactly what we're trying not to have happen. So we know we are going to have moisture inside the cab of this van at times. There's no getting around it. It's going to happen. So now the challenge then becomes, how do you manage that? Because the last thing you want is you don't want mildew. You don't want mold. You don't want things rotting away from the inside out. You've got to understand the moisture is going to be there. You have to find a way to take care of it and make sure it doesn't cause any issues. We did a lot of research and looked at all the systems we could find, and we came to the conclusion that using natural wool was the best solution. We did that for a couple of reasons. One, as an insulator. Natural wool has an R value of about 3.6 per inch when it's dry. Now, that's important because we know it's going to be wet sometimes, but when it's dry, 3.6 per inch, there'll be places in this van where I'm going to have two and up to three inches of insulation. That'll be an R value of six to 10. Now, at one time when I was building houses in Ontario, Canada, where we get severe winters and lots of snow, the building code called for houses to have an R value of 12 in the walls. So this van's going to be better insulated than I expected it to be. 
honestly, it's good, it'll be good that way. Wool's also good for sound retention. It'll, it'll help keep the road noise out. It'll help keep the noises that we're making inside in. And in conjunction with the whole system, like the, the uh, Nokia, Nokia, I can't even say it, that whatever this stuff is, with the insulation and with the other materials we're gonna use, we're doing as much as we can to reduce the sound as possible. So it's a good insulator, it's good for sound. Wool is hydroscopic. It's the only insulation available It's hydros that's hydro hydroscopic. And then what that means is it has the ability to take on moisture. It doesn't get soggy and wet like a sponge. It takes on moisture and it absorbs it into its, its, into its fibers. And then when the uh, ambient moisture or humidity decreases, it releases the moisture back out again. So unlike fiberglass insulation that when it gets wet, it turns into like a, a big soggy puck. Wool will take on moisture and it'll release the moisture. It'll take it on and release it. And when it takes it on, it still functions as an insulator. Still, there still has air spaces between the fibers. It still functions as an insulator. So that's good too. So it's a good insulator. It works well when it's wet. It does, it's not gonna cause mildew. It's not gonna cause mold or rot. And it's a natural product, which is something we really like. It's fully sustainable. It's the wool off of sheep. That's all it is. It's just wool off of sheep. There's no chemicals added. There's no nothing outside to it. It's just a perfectly natural, sustainable product. This particular wool is Havelock wool, and Havelock is an American company. We bought it in Ontario, Canada, but the wool itself comes from New Zealand because New Zealand, there's so many sheep, they have enough wool that they can they can supply a company that makes insulation. So it's actually New Zealand wool. Okay, this is a pretty amazing material to work with. There's a, there is a back and a front. The front has the lines on it. I feel like I'm working in fabric land. With a little experimentation, I found out that, that just by cutting it, rather than a utility knife, a long bladed knife, a sharp long bladed knife, and kind of get started on it. But even that's not going to work. You take, that'll still be the line you want to cut. And then I finally finishing it with the scissors makes a tremendous difference. It's 18 inches. There's another one, 18 inches. Now, I tried a regular utility knife with the blades too short. You need a longer blade to get a, a, a gentler angle to cut it with. Now this, I'm coming up. This is just an amazing material. It's it's almost like it's it's really fun to work with. It's not itchy at all. It's a little bit so particles fall off of when you're installing, so you might want to wear a mask. Uh, but if you pull it in this direction, it comes apart really easily. So if you need it thinner, you want to get into some narrower places. But in terms of width or length, it's really nicely put together, really firm. It's almost half a sweater. The installation really couldn't be any easier. You pre-cut the panels, the vats, to the size you want, and then I was using some heavy-duty spray adhesive and just put a good coat on the panel. I was focused on the perimeter of the panels themselves, where the vats were going to go, and then a couple of just quick sprays in the center of the field. It really wasn't hard to do at all. You need good ventilation, obviously, but have the doors open, you'll be fine. This stuff needs a few minutes to set up so you can do four or five panels at a time. And then you very carefully take your pre-cut bat and put it into place. It's important to remember that as this, as soon as this stuff touches the contact cement, it's going to stick. So you've got to get it in the right place the first time. You can't move it afterwards. And really, it went on pretty slick. It wasn't hard at all.
Now at the end of the day, this is what the insulation is supposed to look like. It's tucked up under the ceiling. And I left the ceiling off until I got there. And as I was installing the ceiling boards, I insulated as I went. And on the walls, this is what the insulation is supposed to look like when it's done. It's all just really neat behind the, the panel liner. That's great. And this is insulation that I put on the day that you saw the videos. That's fantastic. That was almost, uh, maybe almost three months ago. And over the course of time, there's a little bit of abuse that happens. There's a panel, that, an insulation pad that was, that's fallen off. There's a piece there that's loose. As I pan over to this side, you'll see some of it's really in good shape. Some's in great shape, some's kind of fallen off. If I could do this again, I would not have insulated when I insulated. I would have waited. Again, here's, a, here's the back of a panel that's all lined. That looks great. Here's a panel that, well, it just fell off as I was building my top cupboard. So it, just got, it won't take a lot of abuse. And so I'm going to have to put this back up again. Putting it up isn't hard, but I would not have done it at the time that I did it. I would have waited until I had my cabinets built and I was just ready to put the backs on and then I would have insulated that day, put the backs on, it would have been there, it would have been easy, it would have been clean. I've been, it's been a bit of a, not a challenge, but it's something I've always had to be aware of. Every time I come into the van, I got to be careful I don't pull on the insulation. So, don't make it one of the first things you do.